Judges is ready. Perfect. Sometimes debaters get into their own little debate role and really look at policies in a very narrow-minded way of looking at them. And really what we should be doing as debate teams is looking and representing Congress, looking at policies at a big picture, looking at what would actually happen in the real world. And so I'll actually see in my speech that the affirmative team, while they're withdrawing from your start, they're looking at policy in a very narrow-minded debate way of looking at things, not really looking at how policy actually works. Uh, so in my speech, we're going to be looking first at their first justification, talking about missile defense, showing how START does not in any way hinder missile defense. Secondly, we're going to be looking at sovereignty, saying that even if you wanted to pull out of the treaty, you could not. They're going to bring up some disadvantages, and finally, we're going to be looking at some advocacy issues with the affirmative team. So let's start off with their first justification, and that is missile defense. Now, this piece of evidence right here comes from Brian McKeon. He's a senior advisor to the NSC, deputy national security advisor to the vice president. He wrote this on the White House's website, April 8, 2010. He said, quote, one issue relates to U.S. plans for missile defense. The Russian government made a unilateral statement in connection with the treaty, saying that indicated that if there is a, qual a qualitative and quantitative buildup in the, in the U.S. missile defense system, such a development would justify Russia's withdrawal from the New START treaty. There is nothing particularly novel about this kind of unilateral statement. In the long history of arms control agreements between the United States and Russia, and before that the Soviet Union, dating back to the Nixon administration, the two countries have frequently issued such statements at the end of a long treaty negotiation. Sometimes these statements would make a public, uh, public a political understanding between the parties. Other times, they represent the party's view or interpretation of an issue. In many cases, the other party would respond to its own view. The Russian statement falls into this latter category. It is described as a unilateral statement for a reason. The Russian government made a statement about missile defense with which the United States did not and does not agree. If we had agreed to it, the issue would have been put into the treaty text or issued as a joint statement. In fact, the United States issued its own unilateral statement indicating that it planned to continue to develop and deploy its missile defense systems in order to defend itself. Neither the Russian statement nor the U.S. statement is legally binding to the other party, but each side is making its intentions clear to the other party and to the world. This is a very important piece of evidence. What it is saying is that the so-called hindrance of the missile defense system that the affirmative team is claiming just came from a unilateral statement by Russia. It was not legally binding. It was not in the treaty text. There is nowhere in the treaty where it says the United States cannot build up its missile defense. So there's absolutely no justification for removing a new start, for backing out a new start. I have another piece of evidence here saying that the United States and Russia are going to continue to talk about missile defense. This comes from Richard Brodero, Wall Street Journal, January 14, 2011. So just a couple months ago, or just about a month ago, he said, Tommy Vidor, a spokesman for the White House National Security Council, said the administration intends to try to move talks on tactical nuclear weapons within one year of the new start's entry into force. The White House said there's a schedule for talks on missile defense issues that will help us advance the broader arms reduction agenda. So those two pieces of evidence will really take out the first justification and really the only justification for voting for the affirmative team. Missile defense is not hindered by the New START Treaty. As we're going to see later, it's a net beneficial treaty. Backing out of it would be detrimental to U.S. policy and global stability um, in general. Uh, now this brings us to our solvency point, and this really talks about the withdrawal clause in the treaty. In the affirmative team's mandate, they said there's a withdrawal clause saying that under extraordinary circumstances, a party can back out of the treaty. And what we see here, nothing has occurred since we ratify it. This piece of evidence, uh, this is actually an extraordinary events clause in the treaty, section three of article 14 of the treaty. They said, quote, each party shall, in exercising its national sovereignty, have the right to withdraw from this treaty if it decides extraordinary events related to the subject matter of the treaty, so nuclear weapons, of this treaty have jeopardized its supreme interest. Such notice will contain a statement of the extraordinary events notifying the parties regards to having jeopardized its supreme interest. What this is importantly saying is saying there's nothing happened that's extraordinary regarding to nuclear weapons since we rat ratified it. Nothing happened. Essentially what this means is it's just a legal clause that we put in there, and it really means if we have a nuclear war, maybe one of us will back out, but really there's absolutely no extraordinary justification for backing out of the treaty. What this means for the affirmative team, there's absolutely no solvency. There is no legitimate way to back out of this treaty. And I'd like to point out again, if something had happened since we ratified the treaty that was extraordinary, we may have grounds for backing out. Nothing has changed since we ratified it. What we should have done is if you really think these are problems not to ratify the treaty, we shouldn't have ratified it in the first place. But we did, so now we're into it, we can't back out. This brings us to um, our disadvantages. And the first disadvantage is talking about how there's going to be actually an increased risk after backing out of the treaty, or really, in other words, not having a treaty there. Now, the link here is that the Russian nuclear arsenal is the biggest U.S. national security threat. This comes from Matthew Rajensky. He's a JD from Stanford uh, Law School. He said in April 11, 2010, I quote, the fact is, is that while we may face many serious national security threats, the Russian nuclear arsenal is the single greatest existential threat as such that the United States faces. 
So essentially what this piece of evidence is saying is that the U.S. has to focus, has to prioritize the Russian nuclear stockpiles that we have to deal with them. The Affirm team wrote a piece of evidence in their opening 1AC saying that why should we have a treaty with Russia where we don't have one with Britain or China? Well, the fact is, is that Russia is the other nuclear superpower in the world. We had a cold war with them. They are the priority. The impact here is that without the New START Treaty, we have absolutely zero monitoring of Russian nuclear sites or their actual weapons. This comes from Matt Bergman, um, and he said in 2010, that quote, no concerns are legitimate enough to justify a vote in opposition to the treaty, New START, and every day that goes by without a new treaty, the United States loses valuable intelligence on Russia's nuclear forces due to the lack of any verification and monitoring measure. This harms U.S. security and creates an incredibly uncertain and dangerous nuclear environment. Without the treaty in place, we have absolutely zero way to monitor the Russia's nuclear stockpiles, their nuclear sites. We had the start with the first START treaty, which expired, which is why we came up with this new START treaty. Without it, we are seriously undermining and hurting U.S.'s national security and global security as a whole. This brings me to my second disadvantage. We're going to be bringing up another disadvantage in my partner's speech, but this is really talking about how you have backing out a treaty would cause global instability. And there are several pieces of evidence here. Um, this comes from Max Bergman, April 6, 2010. He said, quote, Failure to ratify New START will jeopardize the concrete security gains from the U.S.-Russia reset. Rejection would send the message to Moscow that the United States is not a reliable partner. That's one piece of evidence. I'm going to continue reading pieces of evidence on this disadvantage. This piece of evidence comes from Voice of Russia, January 27, 2011. They said, quote, U.N. Security General Ban Kai moon has welcomed ratification by the Russian parliament of the New START Treaty, according to an official statement. By allowing the treaty to enter into force, the Russian Federation has demonstrated its commitment to achieving nuclear disarmament and the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. The U.S. Security General hopes that Russia and the United States will seek to achieve more ambitious reductions in all types of nuclear weapons. We'll be touching on this more in the following speeches, but really what the crux of this disadvantage is saying is that we've entered into this treaty. It's legally binding. We're into it. We've ratified it. We've said that it's a good idea. Obama has really staked a lot of his political capital, which we're going to be talking about later, on this treaty. Russia has ratified it. The UN has praised us for it. Not only this, but we actually had to betray Britain. We actually gave Russia information about Britain's nuclear arms to Russia to get them to ratify the treaty. So really, one, we've already backed out on our friends, and two, everyone praises the treaty. So pulling out of it sends several messages. The first impact here is international instability. Backing out of a treaty, one, essentially legitimizes, legitimizes everyone backing out of treaties. Essentially, it's saying if the U.S. can do it, so can we. It's not a good thing. The second in, um, impact here is that it delegitimizes the U.S. We gave our word that we're going to ratify this treaty. We've stepped on it. We've congratulated Russia for also ratifying it. Everyone has praised us for it. And that we're saying, well, a month later, we decided that it wasn't a good idea, so we're going to back out of it. Sorry. This is not how the U.S. works. And that's really the big picture in today's debate round. The U.S. does not work like this. This is not how foreign policy works. And so I'd urge you to adopt the bigger minded approach to foreign policy. Thank you. One, there is absolutely no legal binding in the treaty that says that. Two, the U.S. and Russia are continuing talks about building missile defense. Okay. And would you agree that NUSTAR is a threat reduction? It reduces weapons. Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, down to the clause of your argument on the extraordinary event, would you agree that both countries agreed to have the clause in the Sure, yeah. Okay. Would you agree that uh, ver down to your verification argument, uh, that verification with the New START Treaty, this is significantly reduced from past treaties. Uh, I'm sorry? Can you um, the question? In past treaty, verification was also in other START treaties, but with the New START, would you agree that it is reduced significantly from past treaties? No. No. Did you read evidence on this? No, that I verification not. is increased. I said that verification is increased and that actually. From past treaties? It says that it's increased. Increased That's from. That's not um, it's just saying that national. You, would you like me to get a piece of evidence? Um, yes. Yeah. I think I left way. That's fine. Um, yeah. 
And would you uh, agree that a base is more important in a relationship than the results? A base meaning? The foundation. Can you give a, an example of what you mean? Okay, well, you have, with any relationship, you have to have a foundation. There's always a Mutual base. interest? Possibly, yes. In a friendship, you have mutual interest. Would you agree that what you base your friendship or that relationship on is more important than results? So, Being? if I base my friendship on something and then I basically lose my friendship by destroying that base, is that, I mean, is my base more important? I'm just asking if you would I, I don't that. understand the question, I'm sorry. Uh, are we being attacked currently in the status quo? Attacked? Yes. Well, we've had several bomb threats and we have to deal with road bombs in New York City and, yeah. Okay. But um, no, we're not attacked. Okay. And is Iran, has Iran obtained advanced missiles? Uh, I'm not aware. Okay, does North Korea have uranium facilities? I'm not totally aware. Okay, would you agree that Iran and North Korea are considered enemies of the United States? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm.